Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In one of our previous videos, we talked about molding sand properties. If you haven't checked it, click the link in the description below. Today, we're going to discuss the testing of molding sand. The molding sand before being put to use is first tested. During the test, if the molding sand is determined to possess the six properties, it will be used for the sand casting process. These properties are porosity, flowability, collapsibility, adhesiveness, cohesiveness and refractoriness. A proper testing of molding sand is required to ensure that the sand being used for production possess the required properties. Hence, it can be ensured that the product obtained has excellent quality and minimal defects. There are several tests that are conducted on molding sand and these tests are grain size analysis, moisture content testing, clay content testing, strength test, permeability test, hardness test, and finally, compactability or flowability test. Let's talk about these in a bit more detail. The first test is grain size analysis. As we know, the final casting requires a smooth surface finish. To obtain a smooth surface finish, the molding sand must have fine particles. If the grain size is uniform, the sand will have fine particles and hence a smooth surface finish can be obtained. To determine grain size, a set of 11 standard sieves with decreasing mesh size is used. A known amount of green and dry sand is shaken downward into the sieves for about 15 minutes. After this, the amount of sand remaining in each sieve is weighed. Their weights are then converted to AFS grain fineness number. If the sand possesses the required GFNs, it will be employed for the casting process. Now let's move to the next test that is moisture content test. Several properties such as permeability and strength of the sand is affected by its moisture content. Inadequate moisture content will result in insufficient strength of sand. On the other hand, too much moisture content can lead to steam bubbles forming inside the metal casting. This causes casting defects in the final product. To determine the moisture content, a device called moisture teller is used. In this equipment, the sand sample is allowed to react with calcium carbide, which acts as an absorbent. Using this, the moisture content is determined by measuring the pressure of acetylene gas released when the calcium carbide reacts with moisture. Another method to determine moisture content is by heating 50 grams of the sand at 110 degrees Celsius for sufficient time. As the moisture inside the sand evaporates, the sand is weighed. By subtracting the new weight from the initial weight, the moisture content is determined. As we know, clay is a binder which helps the sand particles to remain stuck with each other. Hence, clay content plays a vital role in sand casting. To check the content of clay in molding sand, clay content test is important. According to American Foundry Society, AFS clay is the percentage of particles having a diameter of 20 microns or less in a foundry sand sample. To determine clay content, a 50 gram sample of molding sand is washed in water. This water contains sufficient amount of sodium hydroxide in order to make it alkaline so that the clay content will easily wash away. Once the clay is completely removed from the molding sand, it is weighed and then the final weight is subtracted from the initial weight. This difference in the weights is the clay content in the sand. Our next test is the strength test. As we know, the strength or cohesiveness is an important property of molding sand. In order to provide the desired casting, the molding sand must possess sufficient strength. The strength of a molding sand is classified into two categories. The first is green strength, which is the strength of the sand when there is moisture content in it. The other is dry strength, which is the strength of the molding sand when it is completely dry. Strength test is performed by using a standard cylindrical specimen, which is 2 inches in height and 2 inches in diameter. Grips are attached to each side of this specimen. These grips are then moved in order to determine the tensile strength, the compressive strength and shear strength of the sand. Our next topic is the permeability test. We know that permeability for sand is the ability of its particles to allow gases to pass through it. Permeability is important because if the sand possesses insufficient permeability, gases will be trapped inside the mold cavity. This will cause defects in the final casting. During this test, an apparatus is used in which air is allowed to pass through a specimen 
at a pressure of 10 grams per cubic centimeters. The time taken by the air to pass through the specimen is recorded and based on this, the permeability number is given to the specimen. This permeability number is used to determine whether the sand has sufficient permeability or not. The permeability number is given by the equation Pn equals Vh by Pat, where V is the volume of air, H is the height of specimen, P is the air pressure, A is the cross-section area of the sand specimen, and T is the time taken by air in minutes. Now, let's move on to the next test, the hardness test. As we all know, the molding sand must have sufficient hardness to avoid getting destroyed before the molten metal has solidified. At the same time, too much hardness will cause difficulties in obtaining the casting from the mold cavity. To perform a hardness test, an equipment called mold hardness tester is used. In this test, a hemispherical ball of a half inch diameter is loaded with a spring load of 980 grams. This ball is made to penetrate into the sand mold and this penetration of ball into the mold is indicated on a dial. In this way, the hardness of the sand is obtained. Till now, we have discussed almost all methods of sand testing. Now, we will talk about the last sand testing method which is widely considered to be simple as well as directly related to the sand behavior. Yes, we are talking about the compactibility or flowability test. In this test, a fixed volume of sand is filled in a container. It is then compressed with the help of a ramming equipment. As a result of this compressive force, the volume of the sand inside the container decreases and the percentage reduction in volume represents the compactibility or flowability of the sand. Well, that's all for today guys. In this video, we talked about the various sand testing methods which are essential for the sand casting process. In our upcoming videos, we'll cover more topics on casting processes. So until then, stay tuned and stay safe. Bye.